I want to cut to the chase. Don't think that I'm a conspiracy theorist, because I'm not, and I certainly don't want to be. I mean, I happen to know of people that study astrology, spirituality, they're divination experts, and they do not live on a glyph of their own. But I happen to know of somebody else who would think that that was, um, you know, Satan's work, really. Um, and it has not been written that that is a swear word. But this person suggested something revelatory. Schools dumb us down. And there is that side that says the government wants to indoctrinate children. Now, you could get radically extreme with this, or you could find the middle ground. And this is the middle ground. This is the truth. This is and consciousness or the middle way. Thank you, Tail Swan. But anyway, we happen to know of something known as the Prussian model. Prussian model underground. Prussian model, is it really true or not? Prussian model, compulsory schooling, as opposed to the schoolhouse ways of living, where everyone was more grassroots up and everything was more equal and more horizontal. And now authorities, people at the top, um, experts, train children and put them down like, oh, you need to, you know, go to school. You need to... and there's also a difference between school and educated. Educated. You're basically going on a quest of your own for knowledge. Um, you're learning independently, learning on your own, um, drawing your own conclusions to things. Schooled, or you're being taught, you're being forced, well, I don't want to say that, I, you're being just, just, just given information and expected to just take it and remember it and learn it and uh, it's disempowering. And, you know, I am not here by any means to defend anyone. I mean, I want to be real. I don't want to just call out a cry that will not be received and nothing will be changed from it. Because that's not the reality of how it is. So for those who do feel that way, who do see that side of it, let me just tell you, I'm not here to make a case for you. I'm not here to stand up for you. I'm not here to help you and to change things. I am here to tell you that for those in this, in the compulsory school setting, high school and middle school, you go to a class, the bell rings, and then you're forced to go to another class, forced to go to another class, the information is not, you know, digested in your, you know, system or whatever, and all the other common core, you know, all of that. I'm here to tell you that on the 21st of December 2022 this year, there will be people standing outside in the Irving parking lot with silver bells and golden bells, not singing silver bells, but just ringing the bells in the evening. That is a solstice tradition. And that school does resemble a stereotypical school building, and bullying is also another aspect of it, but I don't want to get into that. I just want to say that um, 
you know, it is a mountain that you have to climb. Things need to be achieved. Remember a much colder Christmas. Remember the sad story of Scrooge who had to stay at school over Christmas. Of course, things are shut down. And, you know, things are closed and everything's abandoned because everyone's leaving for the holidays. But what about solstice? Are they still there on solstice? I'm not suggesting home in Stonehenge or anything like that. However... What I am suggesting is that despite being put down by these systems, despite being dimmed, being squashed, being disempowered, don't give up. Don't give up. Just keep going no matter how sad, depressing, boring, monotonous, mundane, um, draining, how it gets you down, how it you know, makes you feel blue. Do not give up because that is so singular of a spiritual lesson. Is to just keep going. It's actually a life lesson. But how resilient, how strong are you in order to keep going? And resilience, the strong, and wounds, they come from, they can be outside the body, but they can also be inside the body, of wounds that don't represent weakness, but represent strengths of what you survive from, and how resilient are you to, okay, there's a challenge, and I can handle it. And so... You know, even going into those classrooms, taking those tests, or doing anything, don't give up. Now, from personal experience, last year I was in the hospital um, about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days from from today. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven um, days I would be going to the hospital, and then I would be going through the operation only to wake up and find a tube in my nose which I hated. It was the bane of my existence, and it was very detrimental to me. I, it was just agonizing every minute of it. And I just had to tell myself, you need to be comfortable while you're uncomfortable. Get comfortable being uncomfortable in other words. And so, throughout the days I improved, I got better, I got stronger. And that was something I have endured, and I am stronger and more resilient um, because of that challenge, because of that obstacle. So, you know, even the depression model, the tests and the demands and the high expectations and the hard work. Go back to books. Go back to videos. Go back to whoever uplifts you. I have so many people that uplift me, um, uplift me, and I can only speak with as much purity as I can muster because of what I've done this year. But putting that aside for what it's truly worth, Remember the sender that you can go back to. If you can't go back to, if you can't watch it, can't read it, think it. The power of memory, the power of seeing someone or something in your mind that gives you comfort, that gives you um, relief and motivation, strength, whatever it is. Keep them in mind. Keep that in mind. Keep that book in mind. Keep your, your family in mind. Keep that person in mind. And keep going until you're done. Don't give up. Anyway, that is my video for today. Bye for now.